Welcome back, everybody, to Raven Stars Witching Hour. I'm your host, Solaris Blue Raven, and I'm here with my very special guest, Steve Colburn. Hey, Steve, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Cool. Yeah, so we were talking about a lot of things, um, you know, planetary events and, and what's going on with the world itself. And, of course, we've had these conversations before, and I tell you what, it does. It gets old after a while because it's like we can talk until we're blue in the face, but the bottom line is, is uh, you know, the course has been, all, been set already, in my opinion, for this world. And I, I think you just have to learn to ride the waves. Yeah, I think we're going to see uh, we're going to see some um, events like uh, disease outbreaks, um, asteroid strikes, mm -hmm. um, perhaps a limited nuclear war, or things like that that'll reduce the population in the next few years. But right. Uh, well, I think they're using. I think they're interested in the eugenics program without a doubt. And and apparently we have overpopulation from what I've been hearing. So, you know, I'm just going to let the universe sort it out. Because I'm not going to worry. Yeah, so much. It, is, it is really, it is really doubtful that the world can support seven billion people or over seven billion people long term. Right. Well, you know what's? What? Yeah, I agree with you. And you know what's really weird is that mankind is really a predator. I mean, mankind, this race of man, however you want to describe them, has really just done nothing but but take and take and take and take and take and give nothing in return. I'm not speaking about everybody, but but the majority. It's been really really bad. I mean, when you look and see what they've done to this world, what they do to each other, what they do to animals, what, I mean, really, what are they offering anybody? And yet they think they're this, this great race. And I, I just don't get it. Well, they have a real sadistic streak, most of them, and they, they'll do anything for money. That's the thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Money's an illusion. It's a form of energy. I mean, but you know that the universe doesn't use money. The universe doesn't, doesn't, the universe is rich in consciousness. I mean, we have instant manifestation abilities when we're plugged in as multidimensional oh. beings. I mean, you know this, I know this, and a lot of listeners know it. So the whole concept of what's going on in this planet is designed to consume, control, manipulate, and shut down and switch off the DNA. And I've mentioned this before on my show, but literally yeah. it's, it's a program designed by mankind and it's not designed by any demon or God. Well, this, I mean, it's this, literally this, man. This society and this world is so controlled and uh, so lacking in freedom that Money and money down here, in my opinion, is like a, like a paradigm for power and freedom, and people get so little of that that uh, they'll jump the chance to to get it, and right? Do whatever, whatever they have to do to get it. It doesn't excuse what they doesn't excuse their actions or anything, but um, that's part of the reason why they do it. Besides being just general um, cavemen with uh, 21st century technology. Well, that's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. Have you have you noticed that some of the contactees, or I don't know if you've put this together yet or not, but how do you notice if they have a high IQ at all? Uh, yeah, I'd characterize the, the the contactees, at least the class two of IQs that that I've um, uh, worked with, um, as having high IQs. They're uh, quite sensitive emotionally compared to normal people, or not, I'll call I call them normals a lot. Mm. Um, and um, they have enhanced psychic abilities, at least for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. They're often just physically stronger. Um, and um, um, there seems to be no real correlation with facial features or um, or um, uh, uh, organ types, with the possible exception of um, of a slight um, increase in, in um, uh, incidence of uh, uh, Rh negative blood and and mm -hmm. um, and um, they often walk a little bit differently than uh, the normals. Um, uh, they usually have um, there, might, there might be a little bit of, a little bit more of a prevalence of blue and green eyes, um, and um, there does seem to be a correlation between uh, being a class two IP and um, and a racial type, though. That the aliens seem most interested in Native Americans, Celts, and uh, Germanic peoples. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and um, um, I was just curious. That's, that's about it on general characteristics mm -hmm. that we've been able to glean so far. Right. Because there's definitely they have, a they difference. Have, they have a predilection for salt. Uh, that's, that's one thing that Dr. Lear and, and uh, Daryl Sims discovered. What's that now? They have a predilection to you like salt. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. And I think Daryl Daryl Sims is the original discoverer of that uh, oh. that fact. Yeah, um, I didn't know about that one. Well, there's definitely something going on here because we have a different what I call there's breakaway societies. Now we have breakaway races that are that are occupying the same planet. 
which literally, I think they're hybrids. I think there are starseed beings that are breaking away in consciousness that are ascending to higher overtones of multidimensional design. And then there are the regulars, what you call normals, who are literally, I call them subhumans, and I know it sounds rude, but I don't care, because they act violent and evil, and they are completely brainwashed into false programming. Yeah, so, they're, they're the old style. You know, the old they're, not style even, they're not even, I can't even call them anything but they're just terrible i mean and i'm not saying everybody is obviously there's some good people out there but there's a there are a hell of a lot of people on this planet that are just plain defective and it makes me wonder what's wrong with their dna is it programming is it their generations of inbreeding i mean what what the hell excuse my french caused that i know they're they're so they're so closed-minded they they tend to hate anybody that's not just like them right i've noticed that that the contact views aren't aren't like that as much yeah well no we're very multifaceted i mean yeah you're dealing with people who are advanced in consciousness. I, I, what I've noticed is that even from my investigations and my own experience, you're dealing with people who are who usually contactees in my labs are usually advanced in consciousness in some way. They usually have yeah, avatar gifts really. already, and those get tracked by covert intelligence programs and maybe enhanced sometimes with, with some of the super soldier programs that they've been doing. But still, I mean, you've, and then you've got the other people who are literally just like rogue whatever. Um, I, I can't imagine who, who created them or, or what petri juice they came off of. I'm not sure. But definitely there's something going on here. And I think that's what's caused so many problems here on the world, unfortunately. If everybody could step up in consciousness, things would be so much better for the world. But it, we're, it's just not going to happen. You, it's just like putting two cats in a shoebox. I mean, we just can't get it to work. So the solution would be let the Earth do its thing. Um, if an asteroid hits, so be it. Obviously, they can't get along. So eventually some kind of a war is going to break out. We've got race wars. We've got potential nuclear war uh, i mean you and i know <laughs> that it just goes on and on right uh, well nuclear war is probably going to break out between india and pakistan at, at some point if nothing else and um and uh, there's been so many close calls with asteroids lately that uh, it's it's difficult to believe that one is going to hit the earth soon uh meteoroid activity in the system is up tremendously actually i'm mm-hmm. um, not sure why other than possibly we're, we're going through the, the center of the galactic plane now well, um, but aren't we all just circling a big the, black uh, hole anyway? When when push comes to shove, aren't we just spiraling <laughs> down the black hole? <laughs> yeah, Sagittarius A, there's a, it's a huge black hole in the center of this galaxy, and there probably is one in the center of most galaxies. Yeah, but, um, absolutely. Yeah, there's about a three million, three million solar mass black hole in the center of our galaxy. And when you think about it, we are moving theory. through a black hole, right? Wouldn't that be kind of in the illusion of? Yeah, the the universe is kind of like a black hole. I mean, mm-hmm. it's kind of like a... It one. In, in, um, in my theory, it's like a... It's like a bubble in um, there's a liquid phase and gas phase um, uh, continuum. Um, and um, the speed of light is much faster in the gas phase and much slower in the liquid phase. And we're at the border of a bubble um, in the liquid phase. Mm-hmm. We're right on the surface of, of, of a bubble in the liquid phase. So we're, we're kind of in the gas phase, but we're at, at a part where the density is changing. And if you apply some energy, you can get into the gas phase, and the speed of light is much faster there. That's why it's so much faster to travel through hyperspace. That's, you know, gas phase also known as hyperspace. Um, or um, a black hole would be the same density as the liquid phase, ether. Mm-hmm. So, that makes and there, sense. The, speed of, the speed of light would be extremely slow. Instead of, instead of billions of times faster than the normal speed of light, it's probably just a few meters per second, according to some experiments. Well, then you look at the speed um, of light, and it's also measured by the observer, right? Um, yeah, they, Einstein was right in that in that the the speed of light appears constant whenever you measure it in whatever reference frame because your your measuring measuring instruments and your time rate are varying according to his um, uh, formulas. The mass of relativity is um, is correct, but the uh, philosophical underpinnings are not. I mean, the whole thing about there being no preferred reference frame that's that's ridiculous. It's nonsense. It's why relativity is so hard to understand. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's complicated, but it, it's it's hard it's hard for people to understand because some of it's based on false premises. Um, mm-hmm. like it leads to a paradox because there is no preferred reference frame. If you um, like the, the twin paradox, um, you've heard of that, right? Mm-hmm. Or you you know you, you send one twin out to a distant star mm-hmm. near the speed of light, and they come back uh, having aged less. Well, you can equally argue that the, tw- the twin that stayed at home. Um, should be the one that's uh, that's younger, uh, since all reference frames are equivalent according to Einstein. Mm-hmm. But um, GPS, um, you know, the, the fact that GPS actually works through there is a there is a reference frame, and it's a reference frame of the, the local gravitating body. And in this case, um, the gravitational field of the Earth, if you're out in in interplanetary space, uh, 
the gravitational field of the sun, if we're in our solar space, it'd be the gravitational field of the galaxy as a whole, or mm-hmm. um, right. you know, there has to be a preferred reference brand. I mean, my God, I mean, they, they just went way too far in saying there's no preferred reference brand. Just like they went too far in saying there is no ether or fabric of space back in the, uh, the turn of the last century. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, you know, and it also connects to, once again, you're dealing with frequencies and dimensions, which are all vibrating on a different frequency. And I think that has a lot to do with the progression insofar as, as what um, and how things appear from one dimension to the next. And of course, um, gravity and, and less gravity and the illusion of gravity and the illusion of, you know, because to me, gravity is, is kind of um, a null thing to some degree. That's just my own perception of it. Well, it can be, it can be influenced by electromagnetic fields because uh, mm-hmm. space itself has an electric and magnetic dipole moment. Yep, so that makes sense. You can, infl- you can influence this flow of, of, of ether or space-time into mm-hmm. a gravitating body by electromagnetic fields. So you can neutralize yep. it or make it stronger or whatever you want, depending on how you do it. See, I know that magnetism and gravity, they affect each other, or magnetism affects gravity. There's no doubt about it because they, they seem to be entwined. Yes. I mean, so, a lot of people so, would argue uh, that, but I, I, I totally gravity. see the resonance with that. What, what's that? Yeah, electric charge and gravity are also intertwined. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's one. Electromagnetism and gravity in general are intertwined. Right. Yeah, it's not that that um, Coral Castle was, was all, um, he, he was building, I believe he was moving things with some form of magnetism, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he had he had some he had some simple way of um, of neutralizing gravity or partially neutralizing gravity so he could move those blocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's um, fascinating. Yep. A lot of yeah, geniuses I mean, I, walk this world. I've um I've heard people say that just that just uh spinning a big rock um uh on a on a, a good bearing that, that has um, a lot of aluminum or copper in it can produce enough uh, gravitational field to do something. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but um, people like uh, Lubes Gallman that made the Coral Castle attempt to support that hypothesis. It's mm-hmm. some simple way to do it. Yeah, um, too. I think he was hassled by government a little bit, too, wasn't he? Yeah, I heard he was. Um, um, he um, made some very, very interesting structures. I mean, in addition to just moving the blocks, he made um, he made a door... Um, to his place out of like a 10 ton block of, um, of coral rock that was balanced so precisely that it couldn't duplicate it in the laboratory. Well, mm-hmm. the, the way he, the way he must've done it is to neutralize the weight of the block and just, just carefully, um, balanced it by hand until he got the exact precise balance point. Um, and, um, that's, um, almost impossible to view just by calculations alone. Yeah, it's fascinating. You know, when you think about it, we've had a lot of brilliant people on this planet, and for some reason or another, they get, uh, you know, monitored, and then, of course, their information gets stolen, their patents get stolen, and everything becomes weaponized, and then, of course, the people don't get any access to the data, and they wander aimlessly on this world being brainwashed and and, uh, completely lied to. And it's really, really a disservice to everybody because I believe that within each person there's a divine spark that can be very brilliant. I don't care what your outlet is, but it's it's unfortunate yeah. that this kind of control, this BS, has been going on, and it just ticks me off. Well, this kind of control um, really squashes people's creativity, for one thing, mm-hmm. um, and it just it's detrimental to the development of um, society as a whole. It's no wonder that we're so backward. I mean, um, going forward. Um, as a species and as a society, has been inhibited by the systems we have in place. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what's wrong with having a world full of productive people and genius minds and, you know, taking them from their lowest to their highest uh, vibration in consciousness and, and ability? You know, what's wrong with that? There are, right? there, there, there's nothing wrong with it, but it, according to government, there is because they're harder to control. Um, yeah, absolutely. They want uh, slaves. Yeah, the, productive people are harder, harder to control. And they, absolutely. They want, um, they want uh, order and... and uh, you know, people do things a certain way and all that, and that's more important than any kind of progress to them. Right. Well, you know, think about corporations, which are governments. I mean, what people have to realize is that they're slaves, too. The sl- they're slaves, whether they realize it or not. They're, they're, they're trapped slaves to, in they're their They're slaves system. to their own, their own rules yep, and their own they bullshit, are. basically. It, yeah, they can't break away from where they're at, and so they want to pull everybody down with them from what I've seen. And it's unfortunate because when you look at these corporations called governments, you want them to be fighting the good fight and doing the good thing um, and being productive and not abusive and not like the fascist 
imbeciles that we've been seeing as of late. You, know, you want to see freedom on all levels, and, and it's just not happening. I mean, there's there's this instead it's going in reverse. It's like everything's going back into the dark ages, and I think it's because there's a polarization going on between the universe and what's happening here on the world. I mean, we've got people who are not up to speed in consciousness and have not done the work to to ascend to in the next level, and then we've got you know the universe which is going full speed of he- ahead. So we've got all these conflicts going on right now. At least that's what I've been seeing. But yeah, you know, it's got to break away because it can't hold on like this forever. It just it just can't stay like this forever. It's got to do something. Yeah, I agree. I and mean, the society they're trying to create is unsustainable. I mean, we no, need all the creativity and productivity we can get to support these seven billion people long term, um, if indeed it's possible at all. Um, and um, they're creating economic, um, biological, and um, uh, and um, you know, urban and you know, living conditions on Earth that are just untenable. I mean, it's going to collapse sooner or later. I mean, I, the, the next collapse, the next major collapse is going to be financial. It's going to come when uh, the banks turn down Uncle Sam's credit card, and that's going right. to ripple through the entire world and cause a collapse that will be bigger than 1929. Right. Well, the thing is, too, we're just off balance completely. But you think about it, you know, you can have a more, what, 7 billion more people, and it, they're all going to be dysfunctional and illiterate. Oh, is, how is that contributing to the world? And how is that contrib- contributing to the future of mankind or the future to any yeah, civilization? I mean, I mean, I mean we, we shouldn't even consider adding to the population logically anyway. Not that no. the race is ever logical, but we should not even consider adding to the population logically unless at least they're all completely well-fed and clothed and educated. Well, the thing is, I think education is huge because what I've been seeing is primordial, illiterate activities that's repelling. And, and a lot of well, different the, countries, the, the, I mean... The, the, stup- the stupidest, least educated ones are the ones breeding the most, too. I mean, it's making me ill. I mean, I can't... I know this sounds rude, you guys, and I'm sorry, but I can't take it. I mean, seriously, what happened to the brilliant, intelligent people? I mean, are they just, like, vanishing off the map or something? Because I think we're being calibrated for the next world, beings like us, the star beings, well, whatever you want to call us, we're contactees. Under, we're, under, we're under attack. I mean, I, yes, uh, we are under attack, without a doubt. The star beings are definitely under attack on this planet, but I also believe we're being calibrated for the next, the next level, which is not on this planet in my opinion. And and I think we've been ready to graduate for a very long time. And unfortunately, we've got a lot of people trying to drag us down here. We've got a lot of people trying to control many I mean, look at NASA, for example. I mean, look at how they're airbrushing data that could be very, very critical for the people to be educated oh, in yeah. knowing and understanding. <laughs> and not only are they what airbrushing things that? out, get this, Steve, they're, they're putting things in to distract them as well. So a lot of the really? data that they're showing, some of it's saying, oh, look, it looks like an extraterrestrial design. That's not even E.T. That's man inserting data as well. So you're dealing with people who are literally trying to play a mind game. And I don't well, have any time. I, I hadn't heard of that before, but I'm, oh, yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not at all surprised. They've been, they've been airbrushing out um, UFOs and structures on the moon and well, Mars so, since, uh, since we started going there. The funny thing is, it's like, how can they hide us? How can they hide what we are? It's like saying, oh... You know, your real dad is this person. I mean, you can only get away with that for so long. You know what I mean? Because the bottom line is we are star beings. That's our celestial heritage. Well, it's, wor- it's worse than that. They've even been covering covering up the uh, the true history of mankind um, on Earth. So the mm-hmm. Smithsonian is the, uh, the ringleader behind this, apparently. Um, like they found, for example, giant, uh, giant skeletons in the Midwest and California and... Um, uh, they, um, went, they they all went to the Smithsonian, and now they claim they never they never received them. They don't have them. Um, right. I've heard persistent rumors about them just dumping uh, remains and artifacts that don't fit into their um, their theories. Um, it's they want people to they want people to believe that we all evolved from monkeys or something, and that may well not be the case. Maybe we're aliens, or maybe the oh, I, I'm a firm. I don't even have to believe that. They the monkeys to get us, or. Um, <laughs> No, yeah, we're not from AIDS. They, they want to okay. prevent us from, from believing that at all costs. And they, Maybe some of them. They want to, um, to seal off the information uh, that ETs exist uh, at all angles, um, not just uh, lights in the sky or um, structures on the moon or Mars, but they also want to, want to um, make sure that people uh, believe that all um, uh, old stories about aliens are or uh, where we came from, or they want to believe it's a, how people believe it's a myth rather than any kind of fact. Right. Well, they're always trying to play middleman. That's the bottom line. And, and you know, as so far as Smithsonian goes, I've heard that story, too, with the giants. And I do believe that a lot of private investors have actually confiscated many ancient artifacts and probably have them, you know, hoarded somewhere with their own little, um, you know, 
area where they can actually worship them solo. But the bottom line is you cannot escape your own destiny insofar as your celestial heritage goes. We're not from here, and that's the bottom line, and I want people to really understand that. Um, your cells and your atoms, we all know it. We're, we're all remnants of the full light universe and the universal spectrum and multiverse. I mean, that's who we are. We're a mirror image of that big universe out there, and with that comes celestial races, heritage, and abilities. You and I both know this. Many listeners know this. And these people who are trying to play middleman or parental unit, I mean, they need to, they need to just stand down and shut up because I've had enough of them. I'm not taking their censorship. And I, I really hope that people who listen, who have children, please don't teach your children wrong data. Please don't show them things yeah. out of man, man, man-made textbooks that are based on lies. I mean, you're putting your children yeah, in all, schools. All, all, it would, all it would take, and there's some signs that intelligent people are starting to do this just to stop, stop believing without question all the uh, stupid uh, fraudulent data that's in the textbooks. Yeah, it's like Dr. Or God least, says at least, this. At least say that that might not be all there is, you know? Well, isn't it obvious? And I don't know about you, Steve, but when I was a kid, I knew that school was BS, okay? I just had that radar. Yeah, So, sure, me I too. mean, <laughs> call it starseed, call it whatever you want to call it, call it a walk-in, I don't most, care. Most starseeds don't like school too much. Yeah, I mean, I tell you, I knew it was all like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Is this all you have? Because honestly, that's exactly, it's just it's just nothing but illiteracy. It, it teaches people to become slaves. And even the people that go to these expensive colleges, I mean, they get their degrees and they come out and they're still not educated because they're missing oh, components. I've seen, lots, I've seen lots of PhDs that are educated, yeah. is, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, but they're missing people pieces that are literally, I mean, they'll only give them spoon-fed data that's been censored. They're not going to give them the bigger p- picture and scenery, which means they're never going to get the full full information. It's really unfortunate. And then you have these yeah, people in the underground. Oh, go ahead. Graduate school, graduate school, in addition to um, uh, teaching people finer points of their field, which I, I guess it does do some of that, uh, is mostly in place to teach um, people beyond the bachelor's degree level to think like everybody else. Right. Yeah, you'll be assimilated into the into the false matrix. Yeah, to, to yeah. assimilate them so that you don't have any mavericks out there coming up with uh, new and erotic ideas that might threaten the status quo. Oh, yeah, heaven forbid you have an invention, yeah. I mean, literally, they'll be at your door monitoring your house or threatening you or taking your patents. I mean, you know, it happened to Tesla. We, we watch all these great people who have these wonderful, brilliant ideas and devices getting screwed over because somebody can't handle the fact that they have something that they're not going to make money off of. Oh yeah, that, that's the bottom line. Is they they want they want to monitor and uh, control all um, inventors and scientists uh, such that um, they don't invent any devices that un- un- a unravel the status quo or b that they can't make money off of. Right. Well, you know, I see science and mysticism as both weaponized at this point in the continuum. I, mean, I, see, I see it both the, going in the same direction. And to me, science and mysticism go hand in hand. I mean, there's you cannot have a, a scientist without some kind of a consciousness, mystical aspect to that, that scientist, in my opinion, that's going to be successful. They have to be merged. I mean, in my opinion, I don't think that they can just be linear. So, But I do see a lot of that going on here on this world. You know, there's just too much control and manipulation without a doubt. But we're here to wake people up. I mean, we're here to, if nothing else, just just show them a different avenue to look at and show them a different spectrum. Um, The implant analysis work that you're doing is phenomenal, and I've always applauded you for this, and I always support you for this, because you're the only one that I know who's been out there on the front lines doing this stuff and having it um, assessed and looking at it. And, you know, in the beginning, people were scoffing. Now everybody and their mother's trying to jump on the bandwagon. And it's kind of like, you know, it irritates me to some degree because I see people they, they look at something and they're not understanding that there's some serious, serious things happen with people that get inducted and abducted. It's not a joy ride for a lot of people. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's not okay. This is serious. And you see people pro- protesting about little race wars here and there and, and say, you know, whatever that's crap that's been going on in Ferguson and all that garbage. But they don't think twice about the people that are being hit with electromagnetic warfare or the people that are being inducted that are going through torturous avenues every single day of their lives, some of them. And yet nobody's protesting about that, right? So, so you know, people's well, priorities you know, are off balance. It's um, it's it's not all, it's 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 all about the money. I mean, the yep. these um, you know, there's no money in protesting uh, for a small minority of people that are being hit with electromagnetic warfare and being abducted by aliens, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the big uh, protest in the streets about uh, race these days is, in my opinion, about money. I mean, the mm-hmm. the um. The, uh, the organizations that are uh, representing these people want money, and uh, the black people want, at least the ones that are protesting, want more money off welfare and such. And um, um, maybe I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. No, you're but not. I, no. I, I call them as I see them, but it's all, it's, it's, I think it's all about money. Well, it's about a um, lot of things. It's about money, and of course, and I don't care for the race card myself. I mean, I don't care what color you are. I could give a crap what color you are. It's how you act with your fellow man. And if you're a thief, you're a thief. That's the bottom line. 
If you do something that's going to get your butt killed because you're a thief, well, I don't have sympathy for you. And that's the bottom line, too. But I'll tell you what, media, mainstream media spins it in a really bad direction. Everybody and their mother, who's not even paying attention, the sheeple, will get out there and protest when they don't know what the hell's going on. You know, and this is what annoys me. It's like, educate yourselves before you get out there and start protesting about things you don't understand. We're and, in a very volatile situation. We the People have been encouraged to um, be polarized about race more than ever before. It was being emphasized more than ever before. Yeah. Um, Division. And, um, and law enforcement's out of control, and these people uh, think they have a, a God-given mm-hmm. right to protest and um, get more of everything and all that. It's a volatile um, situation. And, well, uh, you know... I need to be off planet and observe this from like a space station because I'm like, I got to get out of here. It's just too crazy. I'm serious, well, man. I mean, it's I weird. Wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't live anywhere near um, places that, that are flashpoints of racial tension. Well, yeah. There's going to be a lot of problems yeah, there. I agree. The masses are a dangerous thing when they're basically, if you have a literacy and you have people who don't know what's going on and they're, they're rageaholics. Yeah. You better stay away. Absolutely. It's just a dangerous uh, combination without a doubt. And of course, our, our, you know, our police departments now are are militarized. So literally, they have a license to kill. Um, Whether people like it or not, that's just the way it is. And if they have a problem with that, then they should go talk to D.C. about it, because that's what's happened. And and that's the bottom line. And I've said before, I've worked surveillance. I think they're I think they're told I think they're told to kill. uh, Well, they have they have a license to kill. They're literally militarized. Militarized means they don't negotiate. The military will not negotiate with you. They're not going to hold your hand. If you're in their way, they're going to take you down. And, and so people need to understand that. It's not a touchy-feely thing anymore with the old officer from Ireland coming around. You know, It doesn't happen like that anymore. This is a different world. And people need to understand that. Not only are we heading in that direction, Steve, we're going to transhumanism where people are being interfaced with machines. Now, they don't have a problem being stuck to their iPhones 24 hours a day or stuck to their computers 24 hours a day. So why would they bitch, excuse my French, about a, about a chip in their brain? Really? They don't care, you know? Oh, it probably is going to. It probably is going to. I mean, um, I can see it. I can see it. Road, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, and you're talking to somebody who's been interfaced with artificial intelligence. Okay. You've got, you're talking to somebody who's who's been on the path of ten years of my life being into a different calibration in a different universe because of the type of technology I've been interfaced with, which is provable, by the way. So you know, I look at these people. I'm like, you know what? Let them let them sort themselves out. But the bottom line is, shame on them for not as staying educated, not educating themselves, and going beyond the spectrum, and not looking. In between the spaces. And, and what I also see is a lack of courage. People don't have the courage to stand up and say something anymore. There's this there's this cowardly stance. And I'm like, I don't know where it comes from. But there are so many people, yeah, especially I don't in know America. Where it comes from either. I mean, I've seen some some academics actually even protest um, this lack of um, intellectual courage. I mean, um, yeah. it's like, where's uh, Dr. Tadahiko Mazzino in his book on cold fusion said that, um, said that uh, he... Um, Saw around him a lot of colleagues that just just want to want a um, peaceful uh, career where nothing rocks the boat and everything and and that uh, and having you know peace quote unquote or not rocking the boat takes um, takes priority over actually accomplishing anything yeah. and um, uh, there's there's a lot of pressure to conform anymore and there's a lot of threats out there and everything but I thought that's what academics was supposed to be for is for advancing the frontiers and and making statements and being um, uh, proactive about things and not being inhibited by uh, conventionality. And um, um, that spirit certainly is not in this generation, I don't think. Right. Well, you know, I can understand tolerance to some degree, but you don't cave into evil. And you don't cave into evil people and evil agendas. And if you can't tell the difference between good and evil, then there's something wrong with you, in my opinion. Because um, there's a lot of evil going on in the world right now. And people are looking away and they're saying, oh, let's embrace it. Embrace what, pray tell? Embrace people who are trying to take your ass out? I mean, literally, there's so much going on here. Don't get me started because business can get really nasty really quick here. But (laughs) I... um... Uh, I think that um, humans are born with an, an innate uh, ability to, even the normal humans are born with an innate ability to know good from evil, and uh, mm-hmm. they're just ignore they're just ignoring that sense and doing what they want these days. Yeah, I mean, they just don't have a moral compass anymore. And I guess I think a lot of what I'm seeing here, especially in America right now, is is a lack of courage and a lack of of standing up and being counted. And when you see something going down in D.C. that's not appropriate. You stand up and you do something about it. And I'm not talking about these little protests. I'm talking about the bigger scenery behind it all. Our country is going down the sewer. And I've said this several times over since I started getting getting on the air and talking about a lot of different things. I mean, literally, we are in a situation in America which needs to go into a better direction. And we have terrible, terrible 
leadership and the illusion of power. So, you know, it just goes well, on. Our, our, leader, our leadership should all be be fired and a lot of them mm-hmm. should be tried for tried for treason yeah. or other crimes and put in jail. Uh, I totally agree. But um, um, you know, there, were, there were only uh, a handful of senators, for example, that, that voted no on the Patriot Act uh, right. and um, um, some other freedom-smashing legislation they put through. So yeah. um, I, I just don't think that uh, Congress has acted in the public's best interest for years. They act no. in the best interest of those people who are above them and or you know, people that donate at least 30 grand a year to their re-election campaign. Absolutely. Well, even, even yeah. admitted in print that he didn't listen to anybody that doesn't donate at least 30,000 right. a year to his re-election campaign. Well, they want their they kibble. Calculated out how much it costs them to stay in office, and they want uh, that anybody they listen to to contribute a share of that. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. It's all driven by money. Well, you know, they're all, I call them crazy daisies because that's what they are in Congress, man. There's some there's some people in there that are like, wow, they need to be in a home somewhere. I'm not kidding. So I look at them and I'm thinking to myself, this is not right, man. There's something really wrong. And you have to ask yourself, now I've come to two solutions here or, or two um, assessments. They're either insane or they're being mind controlled. There's one or the other. They either have dementia and they're crazy or... They need. They're under some kind of a mind control. There's something really, really uh, wrong. Who are you talking about specifically? I'm then? talking about Congress. I'm talking about people in Congress. I'm talking about people in D.C. There's something wrong with these people. They're not making rational decisions, and something's causing. Either it's not them. rational, or it's, or it's driven by uh, an agenda that's right. not um, uh, pro-American. That's for sure. Well, it's like you know, if I wanted to live like um, you know, Dark Ages fascism, I guess I would have created an alternate timeline to do so. Right? I don't think any of us signed <laughs> up for that. As as Americans, right? You know, no, and what, what about you know, freedom? What, speaking, speaking of that, one of the most um, one of the most illogical, uh, downright stupid, uh, self serving pieces of legislation that they've introduced um, in all the time I've been on this earth has been that cap and trade thing. I'm glad that didn't pass. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all that's always that's all this economy needs is for ele- for electricity and other forms of energy to become even more expensive. Um, yeah. Uh, exactly. On the pretext that we're stopping global warming, that's a big lie anyway. Oh, it's just one big, well, you know what? It's like Pinocchio's nose is really big because all of them are liars. And so you can't take anything they say for face value. I mean, it's literally what you can expect is lies. And if, if you understand that, then they just navigate beyond it all, basically, because that's what yeah, it boils down to. Global warming is the biggest uh, hoax since Y2K. I mean, um, we may have global climate instability on this planet. I wouldn't doubt that at all. But as far as the general warming trend, uh, I think that's been disproved. Well, look at the weather, um, mo- excuse me, weather modification, too. Um, that's like, you know, if we're having issues yeah. with our climate, we'll take a good look at all the stuff that's going on with weather, with weather, bleh, weather modification. So, you know. Well, we haven't, we haven't had a natural climate since the 60s. We've had weather wars going on since the Cold War. I mean, the mm-hmm. Soviets have, have been screwing with our weather. Uh, at least since the early 60s, and uh, uh, we're probably doing it now, too. Yeah, well, it's just, like I said, it's like one big bad scenario. I'm thinking to myself, please, please stop the earth. I want to get off. <laughs> just, I can't take it anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I would if I could, too. But um, I'm just, like, ready to trans- move on, you know? I'm just, without like... transportation not this place, it's going to be difficult. We have to... Right. Well, they, they have a lot of privatized space programs right now, so we'll see. But it seems to me like those are going to be catering to the people who are like the multi-billionaire types and not, not your average, you know, upper yeah. middle class. Well, that, that Mars project sounded interesting where they, they wanted uh, like two or 3,000 people. To be right. I would Mars. go. I would go in New York Minute, but I, I think I'm too old anyway in the illusion of. I think they probably want youngins. But, um, but seriously, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'd be ready to rock and roll off the world. I'm done with this place. This, this, this. Well, I was always a big fan of the space program. I've been waiting for 30 years for a civilian to set foot on Mars. I think they've already been to Mars. Oh, yeah, we have the Black uh, Space Program, yeah. um, The Black Space Program probably was there 30 years ago or more. Well, that's the bottom Um, line is, you know, it's kind of like they go in and they do their forensic um, cleanup, so to speak. And then when anybody who does a mainstream trip over there is going to go, oh, look, well, you can't trust what you're going to be seeing over there because it's already been uh, cleaned up. You know, damage control has been done. Let's put it that way. So that's that's something that people need. What we really need, what we really need, is a um, is a private spacecraft similar to you, like the Viking lander, uh, to go over there and make some independent measurements that aren't NASA funded at all. Yep. And I think they'd, be, I think they'd find some surprising things. I think, I think they'd find that the average temperature of Mars is a lot higher than NASA's claiming. I think they'd find liquid water mm-hmm. at least in certain places on the planet. They've already seen mud, obvious mud in the rover uh, images. Right. And I think they'd find that the atmospheric pressure is quite a bit higher than we've been told as well. Right. Well, this whole thing about, you know, um, 
the, the masses aren't prepared to handle the truth. I mean, you know why they can't handle the truth is because they've been lied to for so long. You know, had you told them the truth since day one, these people would have been intelligent and empowered as a civilization. But instead, they played these games. And, and now look at this mess, you know. So I blame a lot of this on these illusion of people who are living the power of whatever they think they are to, to control and manipulate the masses. I'm like, shame on a lot of you if you think you're so superior that you had to hide information or censor data because you had access to something that most people didn't. That's that's just a crock, you know. So I really um, – it's very frustrating when I look at that because people have a right to yeah. know. Everybody has a right to know. I mean the bottom line is, well, you know, nobody should be doing any type of uh, censorship like that. Well, I think I said this last time, uh, too. It wasn't really, really upset me. It was that uh, was finding out that the um, powers that be are ever going to have to correct physical theories. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that um, the government's had a unified field theory for years. They let us go on uh, thinking that string theory is going to somehow eventually – yield the answer. I think Tesla had the answer back in the 40s, or at least most of it. Oh, yeah. Um, they probably built, built on his theory since then, and, um, and uh, you know, he knew the, the whole Einsteinian thing about there being no no fabric of space was complete nonsense, and mm -hmm. um, knew that um, the speed of light is not really a constant like Einstein said. It just, it, it just appears constant. Right. Uh, it, it, Based it on the observation of the, the yeah. continuum. Mm -hmm. He must have done measurements along those lines of radio waves. Right. Well, I think and, Tesla uh, was the one that was really the big mover and shaker. And unfortunately, a lot of people weaponized his work and stole his data, you know. But I, he's yeah. one of my favorites. I mean, he's he's just one of my favorites. And But, yeah, look I what happened. 200 years ahead of his time. Um, yeah, he wasn't from here. There's no way. And they said he was in communication he, with off-worlders, but I, I suspect he was an off-worlder. So, yeah, he, he, looked, he looked like a hybrid. I think mean, he yep, made one, one of the prototype uh, uh, human gray hybrids. Yeah, he was very special. Um, and uh, he was very smart. He even, he even said that a lot of his ideas came from somewhere else that just kind of popped into his head, mm -hmm. like a vision. Right. And, well, that's uh, the way it's supposed to be. He said he was, he said he was in community, when he did his uh, experiments uh, in uh, Colorado Springs, he had that giant Tesla quill there. Um, he said he was in communication with uh, people from Mars. I mean, I, that doesn't sound too out of the realm of possibility to me. I mean, uh, the evidence tends to indicate that Mars is still inhabited at a low population density with most of the people underground. And um, you can easily, with a device like that, use the entire planet as an antenna. Right. Well, we are antennas. In terms not, of yeah. the ELF waves. Absolutely. Not, um, not only are we antennas, but, yeah, the, the technology he was interfacing with and, and all of his devices, yeah, would easily access and be able to communicate with off-world intelligence without a doubt. And um, they really thought he was crazy when he said that. That's when they, they, they dubbed him a mad scientist. But... Um, he wasn't mad. He was uh, one of the greatest scientists that ever lived. Absolutely. Well, look what they did to him. I mean, he died, you know, penniless, and, and they stole everything he had. So, yeah. thieves. Yeah. Then they weaponized everything. They took everything he had, and they turned it into one big array system. I mean, some of the stuff, all the breakthroughs that the United States has had is either from the Germans coming over, our Ger the Germans that we stole after the war, and then, of course, yeah. Tesla. I mean, that's literally where we, we well, had the this huge... The Germans, the Germans were helped by uh, contact with the Greys, too. There's no doubt in my mind. I heard, I heard that they, uh, they first contact, um, first uh, came across craft saucer back in 1933, and after that, uh, embarked in a craft program to contact uh, alien intelligence those and succeeded. Well, it doesn't surprise me at all. And one thing that comes to mind, I mean, we are dealing with our own celestial heritage here. And when I'm talking about off-world species, we have the capability of being that antenna, the, the transmitter and receiver naturally. I mean, when people become in inspired to create something or invent something, it's usually because they're accessing their, their higher self over soul superconscious, which is usually connected to a hive collected or collective or maybe a full light universal spectrum where where those archives are there and accessible i mean that's part of our once again i know this sounds out there but that's really our multidimensional design and it links into off-world intelligence extraterrestrial so it doesn't surprise me at all and the reason that they're trying to do <clears throat> excuse me mind control here is so that they shut down people to a point where they can't access higher consciousness they're not able to create they're not able to bring in that celestial energy and they're not able to to communicate with their their ancestors and their star people ancestors whatever you want to call them so i i mean i see this happening i yeah. see them running interference right now they're terrified of of us as, as star beings ex accessing our multidimensional design and heritage they're terrified well, of I, have, I have reason to believe that most um that most class two abductees have abilities that they just can't access from down here they're for whatever reason either uh, they're, they're blocked by whatever the government's doing or the aliens have just shut them off shut off their abilities or the, the psychic power to them or whatever the case might be they just can't do it down here but um I think telekinesis is one uh, one power that um, 
that um, class two abductees have on board ship mm-hmm. with the aliens but don't have down here, for example. Well, I think it has to do with frequencies and, and accessing the right frequency and being in, in the right resonance with that frequency in order to access those avatar abilities. But I do know we do have those skills. There's no doubt about it. But I also know they run frequency fence interference and they and they run a lot of other types of interference, whether it's from, you know, electromagnetic waves or scalar waves or whatever it is that they're deploying with electromagnetic warfare, they're targeting people because they, they're trying to scramble people. They don't want people ascending in consciousness. And, and you know, can you imagine if somebody's a, a natural um, telekinesis or telepathic like myself? I mean, I've been interfaced with the artificial intelligence. That's a threat. And so they want to control and manipulate that as best they can. They want to make sure that you have a handler, that you have a controller, that you have a programmer, that you have a screen memory because they can't stand the idea of you accessing something that they have no control over. Yeah, to them, to them that would be like a built-in weapon they can't control. You bet. And, you know, I, I mean, you're talking to somebody who's actually been there. So I can tell you point blank, I know their dirty little secrets. I know every little trick up their sleeve. And and people need to pay attention to this because this isn't little woo-woo conversations. I mean, we're talking about technology and weaponization of technology. We're talking about off-world species, which is part of our celestial heritage and our DNA. And if people don't want to accept that, well, that doesn't matter if you don't accept it. You're still a star seed. You're still part of that equation. Every time you look up at the stars at night, you're part of that. That's a mirror image of your essence and on some level. I mean, that's that's the beauty of the universe. I mean, to me, the universe gives us such a wonderful gift, you know, that, that type of merge yeah. with source. And, and we don't need a, a middleman. We don't need somebody running interference or, or trying to play a parental unit. One thing I've never understood about normals is that they, um, they are so for the most part, um, terrified of the idea that aliens exist and are out there, uh, or especially the idea that they're coming and visiting Earth. And I just don't understand why um, the, the idea um, elicits such um, abject terror in, in many of them. Um, yeah. Do you have any insight into that? Well, I, I think it's about because they're basically overpowered by the off-worlders. I mean, anything off-world is going to be able to take this planet out in a microsecond. So, yeah, they should be terrified. They should be shaking in their boots because their best and most intense weaponization of any technology is nothing compared to what can take this planet out. Yeah, they should be scared. They should be very scared. But the bottom line is what's the problem with mankind is that they haven't evolved to the degree they need to be in order to negotiate and communicate with these species. You know, they talk, they talk about all these contracts they've had with extraterrestrials, and I'm not buying that because a true celestial race doesn't need to play this contract game. And I guarantee you... When an off-world race shows up on this planet for real, they will not visit the White House. They will not go to D.C. They do not want to see your leaders, okay? And that's something that people need to pay attention to. They haven't. They haven't for the most part. I think if um, if the uh, the rumors about contracts with the uh, the ETs are true, it's because um, the Greys um, cannot just do whatever they want down here. They have to answer to other powerful alien species as well. Uh, Well, mankind has to answer. Yeah. There's some kind of an alien UN um, that they have to answer to as well. Well, there is a universal law and there's a universal protocol. And the thing is, what mankind is doing on this planet is an abomination, if you ask me. The way he treats his fellow man, well, the violence, the abuse, the evil that's going on in the Middle East, this is inexcusable. Well, destroying, destroying the rainforest really concerns me. We, we get a lot right. more of our oxygen from the rainforest than they were sand before. Yeah, I mean, look what's happening to our oceans. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Negligence yeah, about the, the wazoo. Dead or getting there. I mean, right. and, yeah. um, Fukushima has really uh, wreaked havoc on a lot of species in the Pacific. Yeah, I mean, um, it's just, I mean, where does it begin and where does it end? Radiation sick, seals and whales with radiation sickness now. You know what? It seems Star to me fish. like, yeah, it seems to me like they, they just are so far gone in their own psyches that there's just no way that they can get out of the well they've created for themselves. But unfortunately, there are many of us here who are good people, who are enlightened beings that don't deserve to ride this ugly wave. And, and that needs to change. I mean, we, we, that's why we're here on the radio. That's why we're communicating this data, you know, for those people who are out there listening and understand what we're talking about. Because, you know, this, this can't go on like this anymore. And I hope this is a message to everybody that this world is not doing what it's supposed to be doing because mankind has been, been completely disrupting the flow of, of the natural mm-hmm. law and consciousness. And it's, it's just wrong. Mm-hmm. Right down to, and far off course, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, right down to trying to play God with a little G, right down to um, running interference with, with any being who's incarnated onto this world who's not from here. And I can get very esoteric about that, but we're not from here. And I hope everybody understands that, you know. So, and I'll say that until people start to get it through their brains. <laughs> Just infuriating after a while, you know. But this crazy. Yeah, this, it, there are, at the same time, some indications that some of them are waking up, but um, by and large, uh, most of the normals are still asleep. 
Yeah. Well, you know what it is? We're kind of like the sacred witness here. I mean, there are many of us here who are kind of like the beacons. We just, we're here as the sacred witness. We're, we're um, monitoring, we're, we're referencing data, and we're kind of transmitting it back to whatever you want to call the full light universe. And, and that's what's going on here. So, you know, I don't know what else to say. I can, like I've said before, I get on the radio and I communicate. I'm not going to sit here and gripe, 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 but I am going to communicate what's going on. And I am going to tell the truth, whether people like it or not. And if you well, don't like it, you can switch the channel. Communicate what's going on. There hasn't been enough of that by far. Right. Well, you know, you see so many people out of their own stupidity and insecurities mocking people who have implants, first of all, or mocking the whole concept of an abduction, induction, contactee. I have news for those people. They better wake up and smell the coffee because chances are they have screen memories of their own. And, and yet, you know, they're, you they're mocking it out of fear. I mean, yeah, I believe they are. I truly believe they are. Or ignorance, you know, and they go hand in hand. Both both go hand in hand on that one. But, you know, there's so many people and I've had a lot of people contact me and I know you've had a lot of people contact you who have been um, my labs or contactees or, or however you want to call it. So there's a lot of us out there, a lot of us. You know, um, people have been pulled into government programs and used and abused and, and tested for all sorts of um, projects where they've made advances in sciences now. They're making billions of dollars at the expense of even myself as a test pilot for some of the synthetic telepathy programs that I've been subjected to. So, um, yeah, I do have a problem with people weaponizing and misusing technology. I really do. And and, not, and the lack of respect for, for consciousness and, and, and the celestial design work behind it all. But they don't respect the universe, so why would they respect us, no. right? Now, one thing disgusting about um, a lot of people that uh, in, in government that want these technologies is that um, they almost never want them for anything constructive. They always want them for the lowest common denominator, mm -hmm. worst case scenario, worst thing they could do with these um, these uh, technologies and this power. Uh, I would think that they'd, they'd uh, want to do something constructive once in a while, but that right. doesn't seem to be the case. Yeah, they don't handle power well at all, if you ask me. And have you noticed they're very interested in, in uh, mining asteroids now? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that. They were really poo pooing the idea. For I, I was very interested in the idea from, from the beginning of the space program, and um, they were just really putting it down for a long time. Now all of a sudden they're um, they're uh, promoting the idea. I'm, I'm just wondering what's changed. Well, I think there is something connected to um, space travel and, and anti gravity, if I'm not mistaken. There's something. There's a component or an element that they're they're looking for for their mining. I forget the name of it now. But well, yeah. with, with chemical, with chemical or even conventional nuclear propulsion, uh, mining asteroids is barely profitable at best. But with any gravity technology, it would be very profitable. Well, that's it. That's what they're looking for. And I believe that I'll have to send you that email. I saw it somewhere, and I forget the component that they're looking for. But yeah, apparently it's in the asteroids. But you know, they don't care. I mean, once again, it's just about resources and, and, and ravishing anything they can get their hands on. And, it, you know, they can take their tin cans into space all they want, but if they're not evolved in consciousness, those tin cans are going to collapse because it, it takes consciousness <laughs> in motion. And you and I both know this. It's not about all the goodies and all the weapons and all the toys and all the money. It's about consciousness and, and your evolution. If you're not evolved and you have all the money in the world and you're out there in space, well, Good luck, buddy. That's all I have to say because you're not going to get very far. Something's going to squash well, you like a bug. Well, I think, I think you're right. There's so many species out there. Yeah, that, they're going to um, put up with I think, them. I think, Star, I think Star Trek is not too far off the mark as far as uh, what it's like in space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. space anyway. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, um, I think they, I, in fact, I think that a lot of these science fiction shows on television got their, uh, their data from abductees. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, that's where Hollywood gets most of its storyline. You know, that's the funny thing. They'll, they'll laugh at, at what happens to beings like myself, then they'll turn around and make a Hollywood movie out of it and make a lot of money. And as long as Dr. God in Hollywood says it's okay, hey, everybody believes it out there. I don't, I don't get that, but that's what happens. And it's very annoying. I'm sure you can understand. <laughs> yeah. I can go on Definitely. about that. Hey, Steve, you know, we've got about 10 minutes left. It's been so great to have you on tonight. I'm so glad to touch base with you again. And no, I, nice to be here. Oh, it's great to hear your voice, and it's nice good to, to have you on. It really is. You sound good too, by the way. You sound you. you sound good, and uh, I think that this um this whole thing with John is going to be fabulous. So I'm very happy to hear about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, really I, I think so too. That's a good combination. You guys are going to be unstoppable. That's that's a really good combination in general. So um, yeah. and all yeah, and also you're right. yeah, totally. And let everybody know your website, and also if they want to get an implant analysis scan, or if they want to contact you for any questions or speaking engagements or whatever, um, why don't you give them a rundown? Um, yeah, my, my website is, as you said, um, um, uh, yeah, 
and um, my phone number is um, is eight zero five seven nine four eight nine seven five, and uh, my email address is um, s underscore colburn c o l b e r n at yahoo dot com. Excellent. And your your website that you're using now is Alien Evidence Inc. dot webs dot com. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. Yeah, it looks like a nice website too. By the way, I was poking my head in there. It looks awesome. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna go over there and make some um, some uh, changes and bring it all up to date. But um, I'll do that uh, pretty soon when I uh, get a chance. But Excellent. Hoping to get away from some of this negativity down here and get down to work up in Oregon. Well, when is that going to happen? Um, I'm going to start uh, around the first of the year. Wow, that's a great way to start the new year. Yeah. New I energy, agree. new location. And I actually like Oregon, although I haven't really been there, but I hear good things about it. So. Yeah, this is, this area that they're in is, um, they call it the Banana Belt. It's about 50 miles uh, north of the California border on the coast. And um, it doesn't snow there, or at least very, very seldom. It doesn't get that cold. Um, and it gets about 70 or 80 inches of rain a year, but it also has the most sunny days of any place on the Oregon coast. So it's kind of a unique area. That There's even gold on the gold on the beach from the, the Rogue Rivers. The, the, the town of Gold Beach is nearby, and that should be um, uh, an interesting uh, sideline uh, panning for gold on the beach. Mm-hmm. I think that's a better location for you than where you're at personally. Yeah, I do too. Um, yeah. uh, it's cycling in um, uh, Ventura County right now. It's a little like break the energy up a little health. bit. Yeah, I come back to California and I'll uh, come back someplace a little bit further north where it's less crowded. You know, I like Northern California better than I didn't like Los Angeles at all. I, I don't like it out there. You know, it's just, it's just too there's too much going on or too many people. I mean, it's probably it's I don't like New the York traffic. City. <laughs> I don't like anything it's about better, it. It's a lot better than New York City, but that's about the best thing I can say for it. Yeah, it's just like you know. I mean, yeah, I just I prefer it's prettier out towards San Francisco, like where um, Lorian lives, like in Marin County. She's up there. It's really pretty up there. Um, but yeah, it's worth to itself. I don't like it. It's like a, it's like a, a New York number two. Mm-hmm. Um, but they do have a lot of nice restaurants, I guess. They do have a lot of nice restaurants, but you know what? Nowadays you never know what you're eating with this GMO crap. So <laughs> even if it looks like a really nice, yeah. expensive restaurant, it's probably garbage. You're probably eating nothing that's nutritious. GMOs are... and it's full of Fukushima radiation too. And I hear a lot of people say, well, I haven't died yet. So I guess the GMOs are okay. Well, Yeah. Give yourself two years, buddy. <laughs> just like, and let me know when well, you grow a tail, right? Yeah, they're putting like spider genes in the food, and who knows oh, what effect God. that'll What's have. What's going on with the Frankenfood, man? I don't it's get been it. Pro- it's been proven that uh, that they're much lower in, um, in nutrients than non-GMO yeah, food. It's just like Dr. Lear, I gave a couple of lectures about how bad GMO food uh, is, and you can tell that, uh, that they can cause uh, most GMO foods cause organ damage in, uh, in animals. And, they, um, the companies wouldn't give out this data because they say it's proprietary, but why should it be proprietary when all our uh, safety is at stake? Well, you know what's really and interesting? Food is a fundamental thing. Right, and yet the United States, for some reason, there are a lot of other countries that are not doing GMOs. But why U.S. is pushing GMOs? You know, we're really pushing that GMO. We're it's a, pushing. It's a, it's a population control. It's thing. amazing, um, and also they're pushing chemtrails. Now you look at it; we're getting bombarded with with toxins, whether it's dirty electricity, electromagnetic pulse weapons, or it's the food, or it's the chemtrails. I mean, come on, man! I'm surprised we're all not like zombified by now. I am too. I mean, they were they were spraying down here uh, just um, the week before we got the rainstorm. Well, yeah, that's probably why you had the rainstorm too. It could be, yeah. Yeah. Well, they usually spray uh, oh, here. One, one, thing, one thing I wanted to mention on the air, too, is that after the um, after the rainstorm, I checked the radiation level. I've been checking it all along. Um, it's been uh, 10 to 11 counts per minute for, for months now. It oh. went up to 19 to 20 counts per minute right after this rain. So some Fukushima uh, radionuclides steamed down with the rain, apparently. Wow. That's huge. That's that's really yeah. I mean, uh, just just that background count by itself, just the radiation from that, is nothing to worry about. But but you do have to worry about the fact that it's in the food chain at that point. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's that's the indication it's in the food chain. Cesium one thirty seven and strontium ninety and uh, Japanese plutonium and all those guys. Right. Well, you know, like I said before, it's amazing that we don't have like six eyes and tails and horns <laughs> maybe that's our calibration they, they, they will and they will in northern hanshu in japan pretty soon that's right 
Right. Yeah. You know, um, we used to laugh at all those old God, Godzilla movies, but I'm telling you, I may not be laughing anymore. You know, I might no, see I, that. I, I think that I think they, they probably got that from real life. Too. I mean, um, radiation has some effects on living organisms that aren't in the textbooks. I mean, most of the time it just causes mutation and death, but I think it, it might cause uh, on rare occasions some radical mutations like they're showing as well. Right. Well, to me, it's like a slow kill die. and a slow death. I mean, what's going on with us right now with this? If this is a eugenics program, it's a real slow death. Um, they're slowly killing us. And I don't, I don't like that. I don't like it at all. I like healthy lifestyle. You know, we try to live healthy. We try to work out, you know, try to do something that keeps us semi. Yeah. It's a, it's a, all the stuff's population control, the diseases <laughs> that are breaking out, the, the GMO foods, the chemtrails, uh, the additives and everything and the pollutants. And, um, you know, they're trying to reduce the, population growth rate or the population ideally the population that's well it's weird because we're taking all these illegals that are coming across the border and everybody and their mothers coming over here so if they wanted a population control well, obviously we're way overboard right now in the u.s you know oh yeah i mean mexico is the highest population growth rate in the world i think we, our money would have been much better better spent invading mexico than invading iraq well you know and even um, if they just like practice birth control that would be a nice idea wouldn't it well, I mean, if, if if we'd invaded Mexico, we could fix a lot of the problems over there. And uh, these there's there's a ruling set of families over there that's like a Gestapo that mm -hmm. uh, that that uh, keeps all these people down and won't do anything for them. That's why they want want to run north. They don't have jobs. They don't have food. I mean, what else? Right. I mean, I don't want them here either. But what else are they supposed to do? You know? Yeah. No, it's um, really bad. It's like a war zone. I mean, it's it's terrible. Once again, it's ignorance and it's evil. And it's evil out of control that's never been, uh, you know, nobody's ever stood up to it, apparently. Unfortunately, we've had, we've been giving things to the corrupt cabals down there in Mexico. So, I mean, you know, we've been supporting the crime yeah. and the problems. We, we, it's just terrible when you think about it. You know, it's like they get off on evil. I hate evil. I swear to you guys, I hate well, evil. Well, me too. I mean, they're they're supporting the regime down in Mexico, in my opinion, because they're they're both governments are in coots for drug trade. and They're making a lot of money off of it. Right. A lot of getting a lot of extra power off of it, too, and, and passing laws to prevent it, and they can kill people's lives a lot better. Right. Of that. Oh, gosh, Steve, we're out of time here. Gosh darn it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you appreciate the show. And, Steve, thanks for, so much for joining us. Everybody, stay tuned for Shiny Side Out with David Dunger and Mickey coming up next to sell you on into the night from Down Under. And, Steve, thank you again. It's been awesome to have you on. Thank you so much. All right, thanks a lot. I'll talk to you all later. Thank you. Have a good week, everybody. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you.